So lying on your back, just gently pull both knees into your chest. Hands just below the knees, gently squeeze your knees in. Feel the gentle rise of your hips up and a little bit of lengthening here in your low back. As you pull your knees in, see if you can relax your shoulders down. And depending on the flexibility in your hip flexors right now, you might feel a little compression of your thighs against your ribs. But use that compression to deepen your breath in and out through the nose. Inhale. Feel your ribs rise, maybe pushing into your thighs. And then exhale, draw the knees tighter up and in, letting your hips rise up off of the mat. More. Inhale. Push your thighs into your ribs. And exhale, compress. Finding this gentle undulation cycle. Inhale, expansion. And exhale, compression. Inhale. And exhale. Start to release your grip on your knees and let your feet fall down, placing them on the mat. Bring your hands along by your side. Feet about hip width distance apart. Inhale, slowly rise up into a gentle bridge pose. And exhale, lower down. So your pelvis comes all the way down to the mat. Inhale up. Rising onto the very top of your back. And exhale down. And inhale, rise, peeling one vertebra off of the floor at a time. And then exhale, slowly coming down. It's two more times, inhale up. Exhale down. Pressing down through your feet. Inhale, rise. One more time. Pause. You pressing down through your feet. Feel your hamstring start to turn on. Release in your glutes if you can. Use more of the legs, the quads, the hamstrings to lift you up here into your bridge. Let your hands drape down by your side so you're not pushing up into your highest bridge, hips as high as they can go. Instead, you're finding a middle ground where you've got some muscular integration, but we're not clenching in the hands we're not clenching in the glutes we just have a gentle rise of our hips take an inhale and then exhale slowly lower down let me pull your knees back into your chest lift your feet up so you can hook your fingers just behind your knees and gently roll yourself up to seated. Going to extend your legs forward in front of you. And if your hamstrings are tight, then you can keep a gentle bend in your knees. This can also be a place where you might want your blocks and or bolster slash um, pillow cushion. We're going to go into a forward fold. So 
blocks can be under your knees. That's going to help support really tight hamstrings. You can also use your blocks as a prop in front of you to fold your head down onto as we start to get into this fold. So you might just want them somewhere nearby if you're not going to use them under your knees. Legs don't have to be together. They can be hip width distance apart. So from midline of legs down, it's parallel. And then reach back and scoop your glutes back. Inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, hinge at the hips. So it's not going to be a big movement to start. Inhale, reach up. Keep your toes pointing up towards the ceiling. Exhale, fold a little bit deeper. Using your core to start, inhale up. And then exhale, fold. Bring your hands down, probably not touching your toes, especially not necessarily warmed up yet. So they'll probably be the outside of your knees or shin. And then with palms raised, fingertips gripping down into the mat, Pull your chest forward. So we're still working here on maintaining a straight, long back. Inhale through your nose. Keeping your lips sealed slowly, exhale. Find your chest starting to sink a little bit closer down towards your thighs. Inhale. And exhale. Again, trying to hinge just at the hips and keeping the rounding out of our back at this point in our fold. More time, inhale. And exhale. Pause. Now, either setting yourself up with the blocks or the pillow. I'll demonstrate the pillow first. You can pull that in and then fold over, now rounding, letting your forehead down. You might even bring in a block over the pillow, hands down by your side. If you're not gonna use a pillow, maybe you didn't grab one, and you can stack the blocks up so that your forehead is supported. So Yogi's Choice, sometimes people really like having that pillow to fold over, in which case you wanna bring the bottom of your ribs to the top of the pillow before you start to fold and round in the back. Hands draped down by your side. Inhale and bring your inhale to the very bottom of your spine. Can find some expansion there. Exhale, release, and let the weight of your body fall into the support of your props. Palms opened up towards the ceiling. You can also let your toes start to relax here. Now that we have props in some fashion to hold us up, take an inhale. Exhale slowly. Pause briefly at the bottom. Feel the weight of your torso draping down, pulling you deeper into the fold. Inhale. Last time, exhale. Spin your palms back down to the mat. Press fingertips down. Slowly press yourself up, walking your hands back. Coming to a seated Dandasana. Remove your props out to the side. Gently pull your knees up. Swing them around. Coming into all fours, this is where you're going to either use your blocks to stack them up like a table or go to a short table like a coffee table nearby all right so by your table you're going to take eagle arms you're going to bring right arm underneath the left 
fingertips come into palm or you can grab opposite shoulder and then bring that bottom right shoulder down onto the mat and start to walk your knees back. Start to drop your forehead down either to that bottom or the top rather bicep or maybe forearm. Inhale, press into the block and then exhale, let your torso start to drop down towards the mat. So a very intense shoulder opening. Exhale. And you can kind of gauge here how much you let your body weight draw you down and how much you kind of draw your belly back in and don't drop so deep into the pose. Exhale. Keeping palms together. Inhale. Pause at the top, slow exhale. One more time, breath in, try and relax into this posture. Notice if you're resisting, you're restraining. And exhale. Start to walk your knees back in. Let your hands release, drop down. Press your hands onto the table or blocks and sit back. Start to roll right shoulder open and back and then left shoulder. Taking some big round circles. And pause both hands down and going the opposite way, drawing back first and then pulling forward. Pause once both hands come back forward. Inhale, raise arms up. Exhale, bring left arm underneath right for eagle arms. Also, again, variation, grabbing opposite shoulder. And then coming forward, bring that bottom elbow onto your table or your blocks. It's nice to have some kind of cushion underneath there. So blocks that are foam are especially a little bit more gentle. So you could put something on that table if you're using a hard surface. And then start to walk knees back. Rest your head down. Inhale, take a slight rise in your spine up towards the ceiling and then exhale, let your chest drop down. Pretty tight to start. So let the pose start to marinate in your shoulders. It's gonna be a slow process, inhale and exhale. Notice where there's tightness. Inhale, breathe into that. Rise up slightly. Exhale, sink down a little bit deeper. Let yourself close off your eyes. Start to drop out of the sensations and the distractions of sight. Instead, draw your attention, your awareness inward inhale and exhale letting yourself slow down and experience what it's like to breathe in your body right now maybe the first time you've done that today i think this is the first time i've slowed down to breathe into my body today Wednesday is a day to get things done. It feels like you're moving, 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 cresting over the middle of the week into that weekend. Exhale. Just taking this time to slow down. One more time, breath in. And out. 
slowly release the grip of your arms. Walk your knees in. Woo. Move them off of your table and sit back. Sitting back on your heels. You can also take a prop and put it between your heels if that's a little too much on your knees. And then find fingertips down into the mat and lift your gaze up, open your chest. Like to, you can also interlace hands here, pulling your knuckles down towards your toes, opening your chest, expanding in the front body now. <sighs> Exhale. One more time. Deep breath in and out. Slowly release your fingertips. Move your props off to the side. Make your way into all fours, palms down, fingertips wide, toes tucked, knees under your hips. Just sway a little bit hips side to side. Then you can start making some circles, rotating around in your hips and really noticing the femur head rolling in the ball and socket joint at the hips. Pause and move in the opposite direction. Feeling that rotation where there might be some tightness. Not forcing. And then pause. Come back to center, tuck your toes Lift your knees up to hover. Grip your fingertips down into the mat and pull your chest a little bit forward. See if you can drop your knees down a little bit more. Draw your navel up into your spine. Rock a little bit forward. So your shoulders go in front of your fingertips. And then exhale back. Your hips drop back over your heel. Press, keeping your arms straight. Inhale, rock forward. Using your core to stabilize. Exhale, back. Here, pause. Bring your thighs back up into your ribs. Drop your gaze down to your toes. And then slowly start to straighten your legs to about 90 to 95%. Not locking them out completely, but keeping a gentle bend. Pull one heel down and then the other. Keep pressing your finger pads down, downward facing dog. And then bring both heels to an even height over the mat. Find some stillness in your down dog. Again, keep ripping your finger pads down. Take a deep breath in. Breathe into your upper back. See if you can... Spread your shoulder blades wide with your inhale. Exhale, let your chest melt down. Release your neck. And gripping down into the mat, especially with thumbs and pointer fingers, pressing more. Inhale. And exhale. At the bottom of your exhale, an empty look forward. And slowly walk your way into a forward fold at the front of your mat. If you'd like to, and your hamstrings are tight, you can always place the blocks near the front of your mat. Inhale, press up halfway lift, either pressing into the blocks or your shins or hands dangling. And exhale, fold. Feet hip width distance apart. Two fifths, that is, between big toe mounds. Again, inhale, pull up, lengthen, draw navel in, shoulder blades together, exhale, fold. Bend your knees, bring your thighs to your ribs. Should be the theme of tonight's class, I guess, thigh to ribs. Start to reach your hands forward, ground down through your heels, and then slowly reach fingertips up. 
coming into Utkatasana, chair pose. Your knees are going to stay with a little gap between them so that legs are maintaining that hip width distance. Inhale. Exhale, sit down more. Squeeze your knees towards each other so they're not going out wide. Big toes are pressing down, but weight is more in your heels. More time, inhale. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, pull up Ardha Uttanasana, or halfway, lift. And exhale, fold. This time, sweep your arms wide. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. Reach your arms up overhead. Press your feet down. And exhale, fold all the way back down. Bring your fingertips down to the mat, moving those blocks out of the way. And step your left leg back. Inhale, pull your chest forward. Strong, straight left leg. And then exhale, bring your left knee down. Press the top of that foot down. Draw your chest forward, reach your arms forward first, and then up, coming into your Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Inhale, lift your gaze, spread your fingertips and reach them straight up, pinkies forward, thumbs back, ribs pulling in so that you're keeping your core engaged and keeping a support for your low spine, low back here. Breathe in, exhale, bring both hands down to frame your front foot, tuck back toes and step back plank, inhale here in a long plank, exhale, lower your knees down, lower chest and chin down between your thumbs, and then inhale, slide forward into cobra, press your feet down, lift your gaze, and be gentle here with your low back, taking as low or as high of a cobra as feels good. Exhale, lower down. Keep your knees grounded. Tuck your toes. Press back, hips over heels. And then straighten your legs, lifting your knees up, down dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Tent your fingertips, draw your chest forward, straight, strong right leg. Inhale. And then exhale, slowly lower your right knee down. Press the top of that right foot down. Sweep your arms forward first, and then lift them up into your low lunge. Wrap your pinkies forward, thumbs back, and pull your biceps back by your ears. Inhale. Exhale. One more time, breath in. And exhale, bring your hands forward and down, but inside your left leg, your front leg. Heel toe that left foot a little bit out to the left side, and then draw your chest forward. So front view, left foot is forward, hands are down, right underneath your shoulders as you draw yourself through for a runner's lunge. Start to walk your hands now a little bit more forward so that your left shoulder drops to the inside of your left knee and glue that left knee to your left shoulder, not letting that leg drop out to the side. Instead, keep your whole foot grounded onto the mat. As you start to bend your elbows, decide if you can drop down all the way or if you want to pull in one of your blocks or pillows to place your elbows upon. Palms come together, start to drop your chin down towards your chest. Again, pull your left knee in towards your left shoulder and then grounding your elbow tips down wherever you are, start to pull your chest more forward. So you're reaching your chest towards your thumbs. Hands in prayer or palms can be down on the mat, in which case you're pulling your chest to hover over your thumbs. In and out. 
One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Slowly walk your hands back in underneath your chest. Move the block out of the way. And then with that left foot, you're going to pivot it out to the side. Tuck your right back toes under, lift that right knee up, inhale. Exhale, step your right foot out wide, coming into malasana at the front of your mat. Now, malasana might be hips or heels rather lifted, heels grounded. You can take this as wide as you need to with your legs. Hips also might be higher up here if the Malasana is not something you practice daily and you don't squat to pee or poo. It's a little bit harder to get into this pose. Pull your thumbs in towards your chest, lengthen your spine. Inhale. Exhale, release your hands, lift your hips up, forward fold to the front of your mat. Inhale, pull your hands up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms come all the way up to standing, reach up overhead. And then exhale, you're going to bend your knees, drop down now into your Utkatasana. Instead of building it up from the bottom, we're dropping in from the top. Weight more into the heels, but keep the big toes grounded down. And again, feet are hip width distance placement apart. Open your chest. Gaze forward, exhale, see if you can drop your hips a little bit lower down. Challenge yourself, keep drawing your knees in towards each other. Inhale, and exhale, drop down. Last time, breath in. And then exhale, hands drop down, fold down into your forward fold, fingertips down. Step the right foot back, tent your fingertips, pull your chest forward. Strong right leg, keep the gaze forward, inhale. Exhale, lower your right knee down, press the right foot down. Sweeping your arms forward first, inhale. Coming all the way up, exhale, Anjane Asana, low lunge. Breath in and out. One more time, inhale, exhale, sweep both hands down, tuck your back, toes, step back, plank, breathe in, plank, exhale, lower knees down, chest, chin down in between your thumbs, inhale, pull forward, press the top of your feet down, cobra pose, and then keeping your knees grounded, tuck your toes, press hips back over your heels, and straighten your legs to downward facing dog. Inhale, draw your right leg up. And then exhale, step your right foot forward. Again, tent your fingertips, pull your chest forward. Strong left leg, inhale. Exhale, lower down left knee, press the top of that foot down. Hands reach forward first and then up, Anjane Asana, low lunge. Exhale, inhale, pull up through your fingertips, lift your gaze. Exhale, bring your hands down, but inside of your right foot. Heel toe your right foot a little bit over to the right. Pull your chest forward and keep that right knee close to the right shoulder. Start to slowly walk your hands forward so that your shoulder starts to drop down to the inside of your right knee. And then if it felt good, felt accessible on the other side, we'll start by pulling in that block to drop your elbows onto. Keep pulling the right knee in, ground down through the left, inhale, exhale, drop your chin down towards your chest. Inhale, slowly pull your chest forward. And exhale, slightly back. Inhale forward, so your chest is reaching towards your thumbs. 
Exhale back. Time, inhale forward. Exhale back. And then bring your hands down if they were on the block. Walk them back in under your shoulders. Take the right toes, pivot them out to the right. Tuck your left toes under, lift up, gaze forward, inhale. Exhale, take a big step to the front of your mat, Malasana. Elbows to the inside of the knees, pull your thumbs into your chest, lift your gaze. Inhale. And exhale. Keep your knees gripping in towards your elbows. Pull your chest up so that you lengthen your spine. Take another breath in. And then exhale, fold. Toes coming forward. And then bend your knees. Hip width distance between your feet. Thigh to ribs. Reach your arms forward. And then up. Utkatasana chair pose. Take an inhale. Exhale. Draw your navel in towards your spine. Think about how that will lengthen your lumbar spine. Pelvis will drop slightly down and forward into a more anterior tilt. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Deep breath in. And out. Gaze forward. Inhale. Straighten. Reach your arms up. Exhale. Bring your hands down by your side. Standing at the front of your mat, bring your hands to your hips. Lift your right knee up. And exhale, hinging, kick your right leg back. Drop your gaze down to the mat. Spread through your right toes and press it back. See if you can get your torso and your leg to be in a parallel plane above the ground. Inhale and exhale. Start to draw your right knee back in and then slowly stand back up. Step your right foot down. Inhale, reach your arms up and exhale, fold. Inhale, pull up halfway lift. And exhale back down. Inhale, stretch your arms all the way back up. Exhale, drop your hands down by your side and find your hips again. Gaze directly in front of you at something that's not moving. So you can start to focus on balancing. Start to move the weight into your right foot. Lift your left knee up. Inhale. Exhale, hinging at the hips. You should really feel that movement starting at the hips because both hands are clasped around those hips, hinge forward, and then press through your left leg. Drop the left hip slightly down so hips are parallel, spread through the left toes, and press the right leg towards straight. You want still a gentle bend in that right knee. See if you can lower your torso down so that Again, torso and leg are hovering parallel to the ground. Inhale. And exhale. Keep feeling the strength in that right leg. Slowly start to draw the left knee in. And come back to standing. Stomp the left foot down. Inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, fold down through middle. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way back up to standing, arms up overhead. Exhale, hands to hips. Lift your right knee, inhale. Exhale, hinge forward, extend the right leg back behind you. Keep squeezing your hips in. Lower your torso down, inhale, 
Exhale, this time start to bend in your left knee, hovering, and then bring the right foot down. So you're in a high lunge, pivot the back foot so it's parallel to the back of the mat, and right hand will cartwheel open. Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. You want that front heel to line up with the inner arch of your back foot. Really press through the outside edge of that back foot. Come down into your lunge, extend your arms out in opposite directions. Take a deep breath in, chin lining up towards midline. So in forest yoga, which is kind of the basis of my practice, you want to keep the chin more in line with the chest rather than cranking the neck overhead. And just try it on for size. See if it feels a little bit different, a little bit better. Test it out. Inhale. Exhale. You're going to take a reverse warrior. Now make sure as this back hand glides down that leg, you feel a strong leg that you're pressing into. Left arm reaches up overhead and pull that left knee forward so that you're strengthening and lengthening through that left side body. If you want to, you can take the right hand and bring it behind you, reaching either for your pants or fingertips, finding that hip crease on the left side. Another deep breath in and out. Inhale, come back up. Virabhadrasana, two arms extended. And then exhale, drop both hands back behind you. You're going to interlace your palms, or fingers rather, pressing your palms together. Inhale, chest up. Now keeping your warrior two leg, so that left knee drawing forward, you're going to start to drop down, bisecting your legs. Now imagine that the left shoulder and the left inner knee are now like opposite magnets. They don't want to touch. See if you can bend that knee a little bit greater. Use your back straight right leg to knit in your lunge. Pull your fingertips up off of your back and then using and mustering as much balance as you can, drop the crown of your head down towards the mat. Inhale. And exhale. So this is called ostrich pose. <laughs> It's a little bit harder to stick our head in the sand, right? Inhale. Exhale, bring both hands down. Break the clasp at your low back and place them underneath your shoulders. Whew. Keep those Virabhadrasana two legs. We're going to move into head to ankle prep. And I know some of us did head to ankle a couple weeks ago. Maybe it was about a month ago. Ooh, that was fun. We're not going there tonight, but the prep is also a great stretch. And it's a great way to also get into the fascia a little bit. So the layer between skin and muscle. So you're going to take the right hand and step it a little bit outside of the right shoulder. So a little bit back, palm down, and then left hand is the same as the front knee. You're going to pull the heel of your hand as high up as you can in towards your inner thigh, fingertips pointing towards your knee. Take a breath in and then exhale, deepen your lunge. Use the heel of your hand to pull more forward. Inhale, pull out slightly. You can change slightly the placement of your hand, maybe moving a little bit farther up or far down. And then exhale, press forward. Should feel really good stretch along the inside of the right leg as well here. One more time, inhale and exhale. And slowly release the left hand down. We're gonna move into skandhasana. So this back foot is gonna to start to lift toes up. It might pull in as you bend into that front knee, lowering hips down. Right leg is extended. So heel might stay lifted. You might drop down. We're gonna take the left hand, 
scoop the left knee back, press it down and inhale, extend your right arm up. Now this might look something more like this. Uh, it can look any way that you can stabilize. You can also take a block and place it underneath your glutes for a little bit more stability here. Yogi's choice, nobody can see you. Just be true to yourself tonight. Inhale and exhale. More time, inhale and exhale. Bring both hands down. Start to pivot back forward to the front of your mat, lifting your right knee up. Bring both hands to frame your front foot. Inhale, exhale, draw your right knee back forward. Inhale, lift up halfway and exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up, arms up overhead. And then exhale, bring hands down to heart center and to your hips. Inhale, lift your left knee. Exhale, start to hinge. Extend the left leg back. Inhale, press through your right standing leg. Exhale, start to bend that knee to hover. Slowly step back and then pivot. Left back foot parallel with the back of your mat. Right knee forward, aligning heel to the inside of your arch for Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2 pose. Commit that right knee forward. And then make sure that the left leg, the back leg, is not locked out. You're not doing anything funky right there in that uh, ball and socket joint. You're not hanging on it. But instead, there's integration in that left leg. Inhale. Now is the time to test how rock hard that leg is. You're going to glide the left hand down that leg and stretch you and reach your right arm up. Inhale. And exhale. So with your left hand, you should feel that the muscles of the left leg are turned on. You want to pull the right side body long. And you can start to take a half bind here, seeing the left hand sweeping it around behind you. Fingertips will either find the waistband of your pants for good grip or curl those fingertips around right into that hip crease. If you can get that, you'll pull down as you stretch the right side even longer. And inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, slowly bring yourself back up, Virabhadrasana 2. And then exhale, bring your hands down behind you. You're going to interlace your palms and take the opposite interlace, if you can remember what that is. It's going to feel maybe a little bit more awkward. Pull your palms together. Inhale, lift your chest. And then exhale, tip forward for your ostrich pose. Switch it around so that it's a little bit better of a camera angle. Keep committing in that front right knee. And right shoulder and right inner knee are now like opposites, pulling away from each other so that your chest can really bisect between your legs. Try releasing your neck so that find your balance on your feet. Inhale. Exhale, bring your hands down, release them at your low back and plant them under your shoulders. Keep committed in that Virabhadrasana two legs. Take your left hand and move it a little bit farther back to the left. Right hand comes up, fingertips pointing towards your knee and the heel of the hand to start as high up into your hip crease as you can. Take a deep breath in 
And then exhale, push and lengthen that knee long. Inhale. Exhale. Try and keep that back foot grounded. Inhale. And exhale. Pushing the fascia forward down the inside of your knee. Inhale, release, bring the left hand down. Walk your hands a little bit closer to that front right knee. Pivot, pulling the left toes up on the heel, and then that might drag a little bit back as you come into Skandasana. Again, you might be lifted here in your Skandasana, maybe pulling a block. And then you're going to take the right hand, sweep it to the inside of your right knee, and pull back. Inhale, left arm up. You can gaze up at those left fingertips. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Slowly release both hands down. Walk hands to the front. Coming on the back, toes, breath in, and then exhale, step the right foot back, coming into a plank pose, take a breath in, and exhale, lower your knees down to the mat. So we're gonna do a reclined hero's pose. And this is where I think it's gonna be really helpful to have a very cushy pillow. Bolster, you might even use bolster and blocks. So coming down onto your knees, and if you have really sensitive knees, you can always pull up a little bit of your mat and fold it back so you have a nice cushion and put your knees on top of that. And lifting up Start to pull your calves straight back and then sit your hips down. In hero's pose, we want to nestle our hips down between our heels. So for some people, me included, that just doesn't really happen. Those glutes never really hit the ground unless I have super, super, super open quads, which I do not have today. So you can pull in a block. You can pull in just a rolled up blanket if a block is too high. Or if they're just maybe slightly hovering, you can also practice and see if it's okay staying there. But we want to just be really conscious of our low back as we start to recline. Next, to find your pillow, and you're going to pull it in so that it taps right at the very base of your spine. From there, start to move your hands back. And if you start to lower down, you're like, yeah, that's just too far away. Then build yourself up a little bit higher, pulling in maybe blocks. And then the cushion whoop, on top of that. So you can allow it to meet you. Yeah, it feels a little bit better today. Reclining back and you can you know, kind of slowly ease yourself into it. Keep drawing your knees towards each other and forward. So try not to let your knees lift up. And if you start to come down and it just feels like too much still in your low back, so it's going to feel like compression because uh, the curvature is happening right from hips into the mid spine. So if it feels like too much, then just don't go back all the way. You can still kind of use the cushion, use the pillow against your lumbar spine, and then just bend your elbow. You can also go find a couple more props and 
Build yourself a little bit more of a mountain behind your back. Once you get to your Goldilocks spot that is just right, that is sustainable, you're gonna let yourself drape down over that mound. That maybe it's a hill, maybe it's a mountain tonight. Put your hands right down by your side. Inhale, feel your chest open and expand. Exhale, hips heavy, moving closer down to the mat. Inhale. And exhale. in through your nose into solar plexus so right at the base of your ribs exhale dropping down anchoring the bottom of your spine into the mat it helps bring your hands to your ribs inhale Exhale, glide your hands down, dropping down by your side. Exhale. Two more times, breathe in. Ribs expand and exhale, energy dropping down. Last time here, inhale. And exhale, down your spine, down through the tailbone, rooting your hips down into the mat. Bring your hands by your side. Lift your chin towards your chest and then use your arms to gently guide yourself up. Walk hands forward. Undo your blanket, moving any props that you had out to the side, and then lengthening out your mat if you had it. Inhale, rock forward, feel the blood rush back into your knees. Lift up one leg and then the other, just gently tapping down onto the mat. And then move your knees wide, as wide as your mat. Bring big toes together to touch. Walk your hands a little bit forward, inhale. Exhale, press hips back into a child's pose. Let your forehead come down to the mat. Let your ribs graze the inside of your thighs. Keep your fingertips gripping down, arms long. Take an inhale. And then exhale, feel your forehead and your chest melt down. Stay here, taking five more breaths. If you'd like it to be a little bit more intense, you can again prop onto fingertips or bring elbows down, find a prayer pose in your hands and then bend your elbows, bringing your thumbs to the nape of your neck. Inhale, and exhale. And deep breath in, and out. Lift your gaze up, look forward. Exhale, slither forward onto your belly, staying as low to the mat as you can. And then just gently roll over onto your back. Recenter yourself on the mat. And if your props are close, you can take one block underneath your knee or bolster underneath your knees. 
for a little bit more of a supported final Shavasana corpse pose. Toes dropping out to the side, palms face up by your side. Breathe in and out. Inhale. And exhale. Feeling yourself drop back into your body. Letting the outside forces and distractions fall away. Noticing the gentle rise and fall of your ribs, the gentle pressure of the back of your head resting on the mat. Slowly start to pull your feet in, planting them on the mat, knees up towards the ceiling. Gently roll to one side. Pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat. We'll finish with just a couple more pranayama or breath work. Hands down on your knees, and you can be sitting up on a block or on your bolster if it feels good. On a bolster. Inhale into solar plexus. Draw the breath up to the spot of your forehead, third eye. And then exhale, imagine the energy dropping down your spine all the way down out the pelvic floor into the earth. Inhale into solar plexus. Draw that energy up to your forehead, third eye. Exhale down your spine, out through the pelvic floor, tapping down, down into the earth, ground your hips. Inhale, expand into solar plexus. Pull the energy up, clearing, rinsing out your mind, your thoughts. Exhale, flesh down, down, and out. Compress your ribs. Inhale into solar plexus. Up to third eye. Open your chest. Spin the air around. Let it clear. Exhale, flush it down. Into your ground hip down. Last time, inhale into solar plexus. Lengthen your spine. Draw that energy up, up, up. Swirling around your head, third eye. And exhale down through the pelvis. And slowly bring hands together at heart center. Inhale. Draw your thumbs up to third eye. Be curious. Follow your bliss. Namaste.